Good afternoon, Easton. I am Carrie Rapolo, and this is the Shovel Town Scoop. Today is November 4th, 2015. We'll be kicking off today's show with some information from Town Hall. On Monday, November 2nd, the Board of Selectmen held another meeting with a very full agenda. Town Administrator David Colton gave a presentation on an overview on the Board of Selectmen and Town Administrator roles here in the Town of Easton. He also outlined current project the town is working on. If you'd like to watch that in full, it is up on our website. You can go to eastoncat.org to check out the Board of Selectmen meeting along with David Colton's presentation. At the same meeting, they quickly moved on to a presentation by Chris Bullock, who is the CEO and founder of ClearGov.com. The town of Easton has teamed with them to allow a transparency-based format for financial communication. This website is more user-friendly for the public and will enable an easier understanding of the metrics of the town finances. They are hoping to go live with this format very soon. Here's a short video uh, for part of that presentation. And uh, we quickly uh, started connecting with some forward-thinking towns like Easton that saw this platform as a potential means to communicate their finances uh, to the residents in a much more uh, consumer-friendly, digestible format. And uh, so within cooperation with Connor and the team, we've been working on what I'm about to show you through now, which is uh, a, an enhanced version of what you can see on the site today. So this is not yet public. Uh, we're still finalizing some of the numbers, but uh, we hope to go live with this in a, in a couple in a couple weeks. All right, so another presentation was given by Nexamp, a solar energy solutions company that has partnered with the town of Easton to receive solar credits from a solar farm in Sutton, Massachusetts. Nexamp can sell the solar credits to residents in increments of under 25 kilowatts. By signing up, you can save 15% off of your bill using the clean energy. Here's a presentation from their representative explaining community share of solar energy. Um. Starting in 2014, Massachusetts became the seventh state in the country to allow for community shared solar. Um, and what that means in a nutshell is that um, large solar farms like the ones that we're building throughout the state um, aren't only benefiting the utility and they're not only benefiting one um, entity, but they can be shared with the masses. Um, the way Nexamp has approached this is that we share the benefits of the clean energy um, with two anchor tenants, as we call them. And, uh, and you can consider it kind of like a mall um, where Macy's or JC Penny, Penny is the anchor tenant for that mall. And once you get them to sign up, uh, then you know you can go ahead and build your mall. Um, and then you want to get smaller businesses to sign up. And that's what we're doing with our, with our solar farms. We get anchor tenants to, uh, to sign up to enjoy the benefits of net metering, or, or solar credits as we like to call them. Um, and then we move forward with the project. And we sell the rest of the net metering credits, or solar credits, to residents, uh, small businesses, and nonprofits in the area in increments of under 25 kilowatts. And just to put that in perspective, the average uh, Massachusetts home um, requires 6.5 kilowatts of electricity um, in terms of the, the power necessary to power that home. All right, so the next discussion was with DPW Director David Field and Chief of Police Gary Sullivan regarding a petition to add a four-way stop sign at the intersection of Sheridan Street and Spooner Street. Spooner Street is where the middle school and Parkview Elementary schools are located. They have a heavy traffic flow at certain times of the day. Their presentation was to evaluate the traffic count data and analyze the warrants required by the MUTCD, which stands for the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices. After reviewing the guidelines, they have found that none of the warrants were met in order to recommend a four-way stop sign being added to that intersection. However, residents did stand up to further reiterate how dangerous the intersection is for pedestrians, including small children, and that there is some confusion about stopping due to stop signs residing at Lothrop 
and Columbus Streets. Those are before and after Spooner Street. The residents claim that there is confusion on stopping at Spooner Street since it is not a four-way stop sign and feel the need to add a stop sign to slow down the traffic flow and to eliminate the confusion. Chair Dan Murphy asked the DPW Director and Chief of Police to take a little bit more time on the study and to review the data since it has come up frequently at Board of Selectmen meetings. No decision was made, but asked that uh, discussion still take place in regards to the safety concern that the residents do have. So stay tuned for more information on that. All right, so moving on, there's another presentation from David Colton uh, was about the fund balance policy that would commit the town of Easton to keep a combination of free cash in the stabilization fund at 10% of the general fund revenues. Here's a clip from that discussion. Fund balance policy would commit us to a, um, uh, to keep a combination of free cash and stabilization fund at 10% of the general fund uh, revenues. Um, it says that if we fall below 7%, then it requires the superintendent of schools and the town administrator to put together a plan to move it back up. Um, and if it falls below 5%, um, we would have we would declare that a crisis. Hopefully, we would never get there again once we get back up to 10%, um, which we need to start doing. Um, just for informational purposes, after this town meeting, our, the the uh, percentage will be 3.046% of general fund revenue in free cash and stabilization, assuming everything passes. So, we are well below 5%. All right, so again, if you'd like to watch that um, presentation by the Board of Selectmen, you can go to eastandcat.org, where the Board of Selectmen meeting is up and available for you. All right, so ECAT has also produced a 15-minute Government 101 show with former Selectman Colleen Corona. Colleen answers basic questions to how the town of Easton is governed, along with some answers on what an override is and so much more. To find this video, you can go to YouTube and search for our channel, which is Easton Community Access Television, and find the Government 101 with Colleen Corona on our page. It is also on the Town of Easton, uh, Massachusetts Facebook page with a link to the video. And you can also stay tuned for a part two to the government series as we take a more in-depth approach at topics such as audits, overrides, and Proposition 2 and a half. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so the Easton Historical Commission will be holding a photography contest in conjunction with their 16th Annual Preservation Award. They will announce the names of their Preservation Award recipients on Saturday, January 9th, 2016 from 3 to 5 p.m. That's going to be over at the Oaks Ames Memorial Hall. If you'd like to participate in the photography contest, you can go to the town's website and look up the Historical Commission for details. You can also mail in your photographs to John Ventresco, 475 Depot Street in South Easton. This contest is open to residents of Easton only. All winning photo entries will be on display on January 9th, 2016. Okay. So the school committee and superintendent of schools are hosting a 90-minute question and answer period on Thursday, November 5th at 5 p.m. regarding school audit, override, and all things school related. This will take place in the Simmons Lecture Hall at Oliver Ames High School. All interested parties are invited to attend. The school committee will then also meet after the Q&A for their regularly scheduled meeting, which is also open to the public and televised by ECAT. And just a reminder that Wednesday, November 11th is Veterans Day and there will be no school that day. However, there will be a parade down Main Street starting at 11 o'clock. The theme this year is the Veterans of the Police Department. <laughs> Scroll. The parade route is as follows. It'll be at Washington Plaza over to the World War I Memorial. There will be a short ceremony there. And then after the ceremony, the parade will form on Main Street and continue down to the Veterans Memorial Park. Well, there will be another ceremony and it will end. All right, so on Monday, November 16th, coming to the Easton Middle School on loan from Bridgewater State University is Project Earthview. Project Earthview is a joint endeavor of the Department of Geography and the Center for the Advancement of STEM Education at Bridgewater State University. The Earthview is both a fascinating teaching tool and a delicate work of art. The outside is hand-painted, large-scale map of the Earth's surface showing biological communities, rivers, seas, land forms, and continents. 
Um, the inside is a two-story portable classroom that reveals the positions of these continents, islands, and landforms. Um, and it is about 20 feet tall. It's an inflatable globe. If you want more information, you can go to the Bridgewater website and, and search for Earthview. Okay. So, Boy Scout Troop 42 of Easton is hosting their 8th Annual Family Breakfast and Silent Auction Fundraiser. That is this Saturday, November 7th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. over at the Covenant Congregational Church, located at 204 Center Street. It's an all-you-can-eat buffet. You can bring the whole family. It's $5 per person or $20 for a family up to six members. All right, so let's go on to some save the dates for November and December, if you can believe it. November 14th is the Children's Museum Fundraiser. It's a night of comedy at the Oaks Ames Hall. You can get more information on ticket sales on their website, which is childrensmuseuminEaston.org. Also coming up is the Fee Volleyball Tournament at the high school. That's going to be on November 20th. This year's proceeds are going to the Easton Middle School program called Science from Scientists. This program from MIT puts scientists in the classrooms to help support teachers with the teaching of science to our students. You can go to feeonline.org for ticket sales and guidelines. Also, save the date for a fun adults-only New Year's Eve party at the Cuisett House. The theme is Gatsby Gala, complete with a cash bar, Roaring Twenties band, Hearty Bites, a bourbon tasting, and a champagne toast at midnight. Tickets are limited, so you can go get yours online at theamesfreelibrary.org, or you can swing by the library to purchase your tickets there. All right, so the Ames Free Library is also partnering with the Easton Food Pantry. From Saturday, November 7th to November 14th, you can bring in a non-perishable food item, and the library will waive a dollar in overdue fines on your account for each donated item. All donations will be given to the Easton Food Pantry. Food items must be non-perishable and not open, dented, damaged, or expired. For more information, you can go to amesfreelibrary.org or to the eastonfoodpantry.org. All right, and so we have some uh, ECAT news. We have a lot of event events coming up over the next few months. We are looking for responsible residents to help us out with some uh, covering of the Easton Holiday Parade and festivities the first weekend in December and a number of concerts that take place throughout December as well. You can contact Jason Daniels at the studio and call him at 508-230-7200 or email Jason dot daniels at eastoncat.org to sign up you do not need any prior experience to do that all right so that should do it for this week's shovel town scoop join us here next week for more that is happening here in easton see you later <laughs>